Well, welcome to 700 Club Canada, our friend, president, and CEO, Stacey Campbell. How are you, my friend? Great to see you, Brian. Thanks for having me with you. Oh, you know, it is it is a privilege because every time we get an opportunity to catch up, I know that God is doing great things through Prison Fellowship Canada. You know, when you look at COVID, there's been a lot of, of challenges, but there have also been a lot of unintended consequences of COVID that uh, it's pretty neat when we hear the bright spots. How has COVID-19 affected you and the work that you're doing, especially on the front line there, Stacey? Well, like most people, it came in as a as a surprise, Brian, and, and in a season where uh, where I was already, uh, you know, waiting, waiting to uh, spend time at home and thinking, wow, I'm on the road a lot and I'm traveling a lot. And and then in came COVID and I thought, wow, Jesus did this just for just for me, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and it, it came uh, came in that way. But over the um, certainly over the uh, the course of the uh, number of months, it's uh, brought about a lot of changes at uh, at prison fellowship. Has that been for the positive or for the negative? Because I, I completely understand what you're talking about. Because I know when, when it happened, I was like, wow, this is going to be a great opportunity to catch up on some projects that I've let sort of, uh, you know, put them on the back burner for a while. But it seemed like uh, things began to speed up instead of slow down. And it was a, uh, a, a whirlwind. How about yourself? That's right, uh, Brian. We experienced it in a similar way. It was like this this flash of a of a moment where everything went still, and then you you had to take the opportunity. And from there, it just uh, it just went very very quickly. So for us, of course, it it was a big uh, a big change being in 120 institutions across Canada, mm. and then having all the volunteers and all the staff um, required to exit the institution. So that was our still moment <laughs> oh and uh and, and when that happened how did you pivot uh stacy uh how does the operations now change from where it has been typically and historically in in the prison but now being outside Right. So, so um, one of our programs is also our Bridge Care Ministry, and yes. and Bridge Care is a program um, of Prison Fellowship Canada, whereby we walk with um, somebody leaving an institution, a prisoner who's leaving the institution for three to eighteen months, uh, just to transition them safely into the community, so that they're safe, the community's safe, uh, family can be brought um, around that individual, and so we poured, we pivoted, and poured all of our efforts into that program mm. and a really cool god thing that uh that happened was just prior to covid happening we had another ministry call us and say say that they were exiting out of um aftercare and but they had this 1-800 line that was in the prisons and did we want the 1-800 line and of course it's become our lifeline that is how we access the prisoners so prisoners may call us long before uh they're they're out of the prison and we can start to prepare for them coming into community. That is fantastic. You know, as one of our partner ministries with the 700 Club Canada, we are so thrilled with our partnership and we get an opportunity to actually help those that are making the transition with Bridge Care and, and also with Angel Tree and some of the things that you've been doing. But there's been some other things as well with the, with the helpline that have come out of this, unintended consequences or blessings. Tell us about that. Yeah, so a great new initiative that uh, came together with uh, one of the chaplains. Not only have the volunteers and, and the programs been taken out of the prison, but in a number of prisons, also the chaplains have been removed uh, mm. for, for safety reasons. Uh, chaplains have been removed. So it makes a very, very tense, uh, a tense environment. And we did have one chaplain uh, contact us and say, like your bridge care line, could you put in another line that is just for spiritual friends? friendship. And of course, we were we were delighted to uh, to do that. And so uh, we've gone ahead with the uh, arrangements on that. And, and Brian, this is what happens out of that. Ordinarily, one program spot, we would see 12 prisoners in a week in one uh, program spot. And this line allows us to be um, accessible Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and to speak with anywhere from 80 to 100 prisoners in a spiritual <sighs> conversation. 
So we're Praise very Jesus. grateful for our partnership with uh, 700 Club Canada. Wow. Well, tell us, how can we engage and how could we pray for you? And, and is there anything that we can do? Because I know we have some people that are really motivated to, uh, to just see Jesus shine. So a couple of things, um, as we um, as we add uh, prisons, so we've started with one for thirty days. We'll we'll start with one, but of course after after that pilot, we want to we want to move quite quickly. We need fifteen volunteers uh, for every prison, and so we're um, we're wanting church communities to come together, and uh, th- uh, three people can can cover a full day. Um, so whether in groups of three or five or fifteen or or whatever it is that. That is um, definitely something that we want to uh, train people and get them engaged in this uh, engaged in this ministry, and um, and then the other way, of course, is through is through financial partnership as well. Absolutely, you know, when you look at uh, what you're doing right now, this is really the hands and feet of Matthew 25. You know, when you've done it to the least of these, when you visited them in prison, you've done it to me. Uh, Stacy, in, in the last moment, you know, I, I know you've been going through a lot of things as far as home. Is there an area that you say, this is a bright spot that I believe that God has just shown his hand of mercy and grace in, specifically in this in prison fellowship? I think that line was was an um, it, connecting us to that line for sure was an was an incredible um, provision of God uh, far before this far before this happened, but then also just to be able to connect with these guys and 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 women who have needs and to speak wisdom from biblical wisdom um, into their lives and and uh, and have that relationship continue on. Uh, they call us several times. Another bright spot, um, Brian, has been the Angel Tree program. 700 Club Canada has been a, a great supporter of uh, of the Angel Tree. And this year, of course, camps were closed. and uh, But now we're able to connect with the kids, connect with the families consistently, provide Bibles, provide um, worksheets, contests, different things. And so uh, we're engaging with the families and the kids on a whole other level. Well, that's the whole family that's being met. And, you know, it takes the, the whole church to preach the whole gospel to the whole nation. Stacy, uh, keep up the great work. We look forward to hearing more of what's happening with you. And thank you, my friend, for the work that you do. Thank you, Brian. Well, coming up, we've got Anna Weaver, and she has a powerful testimony how God is able to do all things but fail. 